It's the Daily Doug. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to the Daily Doug. Thanks for being with me today. My friends, we're getting things started off right this week with the Metal Monday, and I'm going back to Megadeth for the fourth time on the channel. I know I've got tons of videos, but I've only reviewed music from this band three times previously. We've listened to Holy Wars, In My Darkest Hour, and Tornado of Souls. And today, we're going to be listening to the band's breakthrough single. It's called Peace Cells, and I am happy that you're with me. So even though this is from their second album uh, called Peace Cells, but who is buying? I think that's a pretty cool uh, title. Uh, even though it's from their second album, this single was their breakthrough hit. And the album uh, was released in September of 1986. Their first album was released in 1985. And so almost 40 years later, it is still regarded, this album, as one of the better and more uh, influential metal albums of all time. And this particular song, Peace Sells, has ranked in the top 20 uh, of all-time metal tracks in multiple publications, including from VH1 and from Rolling Stone. So that raises my, uh, my interest quite a bit. <clears throat> and um, as I read through the lyrics, it reads as though uh, Dave, uh, Dave Mustaine, who is our uh, composer here, uh, he is sticking up for metal musicians, I think, uh, and in general, people that like metal music. As I recall, even though I was quite young in the mid 80s, uh, there were uh, some musicians, some hard rockers, some metal folks that were being derided or bad mouthed um, in the media and uh, from, from <laughs> so called pious people, right? And they were saying all sorts of things that were uh, wildly inaccurate, untrue, and they were just spreading unsubstantiated um, rumors about our metal friends. And so this one, at least, has a political or at least a social commentary aspect to the song. And I'm eager to hear what it sounds like, so let's get to it, friends. Dave Mustaine <clears throat> is on guitars and lead vocals. David Ellefson is on the bass and some backing vocals. Chris Poland is on some guitars, and Gar Samuelson is on the drums. I know that there's a pretty um, a good uh, music video that's available for this, because I read that the music video for this song helped propel the band's popularity early in their career. But I'm going to just concentrate on the music today, and I'll catch the uh, video later. So we're just going to grab the audio today and see what is up with Peace Cells from Megadeth. Off we go. And it starts with the bass solo. Okay. Cool. What do you mean I can't get to work on time? Got nothing better to do. And what do you mean I don't pay my bills? We, why do you think I'm broke? <laughs> yeah, we're just like you, folks. We just like to rock. Open E, big riff in E minor. Little guitar solo in there. Driving riff, right? What do you mean I could not be the president of the United States? I'm I'm eligible. I could run. Goes up to the third and then back down to E. No symbols, just straight ahead rock. Because I'm giving the symbols and they ain't being hit. 
Cool. That's E. Up a step to F sharp to G to F sharp. Down to E. Straight ahead metal riff, y'all. Put a price on peace. People try. Okay. Gotta back up. That could only be an E, you know, especially if they're tuned to that. Just a big time riff on uh, on that open string down there. Um, really just a lot of uh, parallel movement. They occasionally would go up to the F sharp, the two chord, and they'd go up to the three chord, uh, which is relative major, but it was really acting more like a like the third of that minor key. And when they went up to that two chord, I think they went up to a full minor two chord, not the diminished two chord that's normally in a minor key, right? So they bar it up is what it seems like. And they move that open power chord just up a full step and and riff on that for, for a little bit. Wow, friends, uh, how's my hair? I was doing a whole lot of uh, banging around there. Um, that may be, actually, I can say pretty definitively uh one i understand i understand why that's uh an all-time classic metal tune it makes complete sense peace sells but who's buying it you know meaning this is what we say we want but in our actions and in what we purchase and in what we pay attention to no we think it's boring because we're paying attention to all the bad news and all the bad stuff. And when uh, there's a crash, you know, and we all rubberneck and we look that way, it's, you know, when there's nothing going wrong, it frees us up to do all of this great stuff and, and think of things and be our best selves, but there's nothing to grab our attention collectively because we're off doing our own thing and, and being great. And as soon as peace goes away and some cataclysmic event happens we're all like Whoosh, what happened what happened what happened and when your news media's <laughs> uh, bottom line is driven by uh, how many people are watching you show them the the negative stuff you show them the bad stuff because it's uh, it's what we react to it's a really interesting song, and it's got a deeper social commentary than I even thought of when I first read through it. And um, I'm really am taken with it. Really, really a great tune. Uh, I, th as I was going to say, um, I believe my favorite so far from Megadeth, and uh, that's saying something, folks. I, I really grooved on that. I want to give you uh, a bit of an interview that Dave gave to uh, Rolling Stone. 
And I found this quite fascinating here as he was talking about this piece and this particular time period. Here's what he said. He says, I was living in a warehouse at the time that I wrote Peace Sells. Homeless. Wow, we're living in a warehouse. We were homeless and I wrote the lyrics on a wall. I didn't even have paper. I had a pen and I wrote them on the wall. <laughs> well, whatever you got, man. Uh, so you don't forget them. Uh, he goes on, and I'm sure that once we moved out of there, somebody probably carved that wall out and took it. Maybe. Uh, I wrote it because I was tired of people mocking metal in general and mocking people who are metal fans. Well, there you go, folks. He was just tired of it. He says, it was hard for me to watch the way we were stereotyped on TV just as dumbasses. For the most part, I think that a lot of musicians are very intelligent and very talented. It's a bummer the way people have been stereotyped. I knew when I wrote this song that I was onto something because prior to that song, um, everything was just shred festing and just playing really aggressive stuff. But as soon as Peace Cells came out, it was like, wow, this is a, uh, a song song. It's a real song as something that unbeknownst to myself would stand the test of time. Something that would be my friend forever. Never had I gotten that feeling from our previous songs before. I never thought, hey, you're going to be playing this song for or every night for the rest of your life. I've always wanted to, and I never ask that, you know, quite frankly, when I've asked or, and had interviews with, um, with musicians, what it's like. Um, I think I've talked about what it's like to be on the monotony of a tour, you know, but not specifically about what it's like to have to come up with the energy to play a song that you've played hundreds or thousands of times by this point and to match the intensity that you need to match it with to make it work and to make it come off and reach the fans who support you and who like the song. You know, it could be um, monotonous. It can be uh, something that, you know, I don't want, I don't want to play Peace Cells tonight. They can, I've played it for 40 years. Uh, but um, yeah, it's something that uh, as a composer, I know the feeling and it's a fleeting feeling, but when you can find it, it really is special friends what he's talking about how he's like i wrote a song it's not just about shredding on the guitar people are going to read this people are going to hear this and they're going to react to it and it's going to get inside them and it's going to live and it struck him as yeah that that's what this is about that's what i want to be doing i want to connect with people i want the music and the things that i say artistically to connect with people, and that's what's going to give this path long-term meaning. I think that's what he's saying, and that's part of what uh, I love about being a composer, is having a piece that I, you know, may have uh, poured over for uh, days or even weeks or months, and have other people that I had never met come across it and work on it and um you know rehearse it and, and they end up liking it and they they find meaning from it and they get to perform it and that sort of thing and it just gives a lot of meaning and connection to uh the composing process and to what i do and um i was struck by dave's statement when he mentioned the same thing and uh what a song to really get them going on peace sells but who's buying well, this has been a really fun and enjoyable journey here on a Metal Monday. Uh, as I got started with Megadeth, I wasn't quite enamored with them, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm growing with them and I'm getting used to their sound. And that was really, really a fun thing for us to listen to on this Metal Monday. It's been Peace Sells, one of the big time hits from Megadeth. Thanks y'all for being with me on this Metal Monday, and I will see you next time on another edition of The Daily Doug.